If you've watched the previous videos in our Know Your Shortcut series, you should have now a pretty good understanding of how to implement shortcuts. So this video is gonna build on that understanding and not cover too much old ground. Today we'll be looking at shortcuts that will help you manage timers and scores in scoreboard titles, which is handy for sports and other scoring events. We'll learn how to adjust scores by various values and how to control a countdown clock with button presses. So stick around. Hi, I'm Heath from vMix. These shortcuts will work in any edition of vMix, including the free 60 day trial that you can download from our website by going to vmix.com forward slash download. Here we are in the vMix interface and the first thing we'll do is add a scoreboard title. I'll go to add, then to title, and now I'll look for the GT scoreboard tab and go looking for a basic scoreboard title. I'll select this one, scoreboard 11, improved scoreboard. Now here I'm brought to the title editor and from here I can see a number of options on the left which represent the various fields in the title that we can adjust. So firstly, we've got the home title, then the home score, then the away title and the away score, and finally the clock. So home title and away title are the names of those teams. I'm gonna leave them the same, but you can set them to whatever you like. Next is the home score. They both will start by default at zero, and we're gonna leave it like that because that's fine. What we want to do later is create shortcuts to adjust that. The one that I do want to fix up though is the clock. So by default, all titles that have clock inputs will have the current time of day from your machine. We want to change that. We want to set that as a countdown timer. So the way we do that is we go to the countdown section and we go to settings. And from here, we set a duration. So this is the period of time that we want our countdown timer to run for. For us, we're gonna go with 15 minutes. So we'll leave this one blank because that's seconds. This is minutes, this is hours. So we're changing this to 15. We're gonna leave the stop time as zero because that's the end of the countdown. And for the display format, at the moment by default, it's in hours, minutes, seconds. We're gonna change that to just minutes, seconds. And that's it. We've now set up our countdown timer and you'll see that that has changed to that format up there. All right, so we can close that down and that is set up and we are ready to create our first shortcuts. So the first shortcut is set text, which is a little bit of an unusual term if you're changing the score, but this is how it works. Firstly, we'll go up to settings, then go to shortcuts, and then we'll click on add and we'll add our first shortcut. So I'm gonna click find to assign a key. I'm gonna press down on the six key and click okay. So that's gonna apply six to our score. I'll explain a little bit more later. We're gonna pick set text by typing it in there and selecting it. And we're gonna apply that to our scoreboard title. And finally, we need to select which field in the scoreboard title we wanna be adjusting. So. What I would like to do is I would like to add six to the home score when I press the six key that are above the letter keys here. So I'm gonna add six and to add six, you don't just type the letter six because all that will do is replace your current score with the number six every time. We don't want that. So there's a special code that you use in order to add to your existing score. And that is plus equals. So by typing plus equals and then the number six, we then add six to our existing score. Now for the title, I'm going to write something like H plus six, meaning home score plus six. And I'm going to make that a local shortcut. There we go. Okay, I can click okay there. I can click okay again. And why don't I demonstrate how that works? So I'm gonna put the title up over the top here and by pressing the number six, we'll see the home score increment by six. And if I press it again, it'll increment by a further six, so take us to 12 and so on. So there we go. We've got a functional plus six key. 
Now, if we go back to the settings and into shortcuts, we can add all sorts of other ones. So I can go to add, I can go to find. This time, perhaps I'll add a single point score addition. Go to set text again. Apply that to our scoreboard. Pick the score for home. And this time, the same again, plus equals, and type the number one. For this, we'll go home plus one and make it a local shortcut. All right, so now we have the ability to add six and the ability to add one to our score. Now, in many games, there's many other scores that you might wanna add, um, such as two or three in this particular one. Um, and then the next thing that we'd wanna do is add all of those scores for the away team. And so what I like to do is use all of the keys along the top here for my home team and use the number pad keys for my away team. So you could set that up, but I don't think there's much need in me demonstrating that. I think you can figure it out for yourself. Now at times you might need to reduce a score. So to do that, what we can do is clone one of these. So I'll click on this and clone it and then edit it. I'll change the key to say the minus key here and keep all of this the same, but change this value from a plus to a minus. And what that will do is take one point off the score. Very handy if I need to adjust the score in a pinch. So I'll change the title to H minus one and click OK and OK. So now we've got a score of 18. If I apply that minus key, I go down to 17, 16 and so on. So that's quite handy. Now, because scoring is pretty important, it's also possible, like with any shortcut, to use the web controller on another device. And this would allow a dedicated person to manage the scores or even two people to manage each team's scores. I talk about the web controller in episode two of the Know Your Shortcut series. So jump to that if you'd like to learn more. Now we could set up shortcuts to reset the scores to zero for the next game, but instead I'll just show you how to do it within the title editor manually. All you need to do is right click your title, go to title editor, and then change those scores. So I'll set that back to zero. And that is that, simple. Let's now take a look at how to control our game clock. In vMix, we call this a countdown timer. So if we go up to settings, then shortcuts and add, and we look in our functions for countdown functions, we're gonna find adjust countdown, change countdown, pause countdown, set countdown, start countdown, stop countdown, and suspend countdown. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna explain what each of those do and then we'll set a couple of them up. Start countdown. This will start or resume the clock countdown. If the clock was on zero, then it will start at the number you set as the duration. If it was already part way through the countdown, then it will resume from there. Stop countdown. This will reset the clock to zero. Suspend countdown. This will suspend or pause the clock. Pause countdown. Now, despite the name, this is a toggling function, and so it will pause the clock if the countdown was running, and it will resume the clock if it was stopped, suspended, or paused. Now, this is a pretty handy one, and most people use this to manage almost the entire game. Adjust countdown. While the clock is ticking down, there are times when you might need to adjust the time backwards or forwards by a few seconds. For instance, if a timeout is called or play resumes, and you're a little bit slow to pause or resume. Note that you cannot adjust your clock higher than the duration that you set. Change countdown. This allows you to type in a specific countdown time in hours, minutes, and seconds. So for instance, if you knew that there was seven minutes and 32 seconds left and your timer was off, you could apply this. Setting this one as a shortcut doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it would be useful as a web script, for example. Note that like the adjust countdown, you can't change the value to be more than the duration you set. And finally, set countdown. This allows you to change the duration of your countdown period. You'll remember at the start that I set the duration period to be 15 minutes. Here, I could set up an alternative period such as 10 minutes, which I could maybe use if overtime is needed. Now that you know what each function does, we'll set up the ones that are most typically used. 
starting with pause countdown to play and pause the clock. Next, we'll add two adjust countdowns for plus one and minus one second adjustments. And finally, set countdown should an overtime period be required. So starting with pause countdown, we'll set that up as the P key, which I can pick from here. And we'll apply that to our scoreboard and set it to clock. We'll set the title to be play, pause, or pally pause, play pause, and finally set it as a local shortcut. Okay, all right, then we'll add another. Now this time I'm gonna be adjusting the clock by one second up or one second down. So I'm gonna use the insert and delete keys right here. So find, I'll use insert first. We'll search for adjust countdown, apply it to our scoreboard, then to the clock and click just the number one. Because it's an adjustment function, we don't need to do that fancy plus equals or anything like that. It's already gonna be clever enough to adjust it. We'll set that as a local shortcut, give it a title. I'm gonna call it second plus one and click OK. Now for the next one to minus one off the clock, I'm gonna clone this. I'm gonna select it and edit it. Change my key to the delete key, click OK. Keep all of these settings the same. Use the minus in front of the one to take one second off. Change the name to second, whoops, minus one and click OK. All right, so now we have a series of functions that are going to play and pause the countdown and also add and minus one second off the live countdown. The last thing we wanna do is add a duration adjustment. So this is for my overtime, if I wanna to go to a 10 minute overtime period. So I'm gonna to go to add, I'm gonna use the letter O for overtime, click okay. I'm gonna search for set countdown and I'm going to set that to the scoreboard, to the clock, and set it to a duration of 0, 0, 10, 0, 0, with colons between, just in the format that's noted here underneath value. I will set that to overtime and click local shortcut and click OK and click OK. So let's test all of this out. So the first thing we've got is the P key that is gonna start and pause our timer. So I'll press it now. And there we are, we've kicked off at 15 minutes and are counting down. Now, if I wanted to pause that for a timeout, for example, I would press the P key again. There we go, we've paused. If I needed to adjust that time, because maybe I paused a second too late, I can take, I can add one second by doing this plus by clicking the insert key. And if I needed to do the opposite, I can press the delete key to take seconds off. And finally, if we get to overtime, well, firstly, we would have the timer already reach zero. So I'm just gonna temporarily set that to zero by clicking the stop, which will zero it out. And now if we're going into overtime, I'll click that O key. And if I press P for play again, we're gonna see that countdown from 10 now. There we go. We've adjusted our duration to 10 minutes so that we can start our overtime period. And that's pretty much all there is to controlling your countdown timer. If you're using other shortcuts to control your scoreboards, we'd love to see information about that in the comments below. And if you need any help with this stuff, we have heaps of support documentation and email support available from our website at vmix.com. It's all accessible from that support tab in the top right corner. So thanks for watching another Know Your Shortcuts episode and I'll see you on the next one.